to go ahead and call to order the City Rail Board of Education meeting for Monday, February 28th, 2022. Ms. Sauber, could you please call the roll? Mr. Dahl. Here. Mrs. Dunbach. Here. Dr. Rohr. Here. Mr. Schreier. Here. Megan Spark. Here, exactly on time. Please stand for the pledge. Agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Oh, Ms. Dauber, could you please call the roll? Mr. Dahl. Yes. Mr. Dermagos. Yes. Dr. Lord. Yes. Mr. Schroeder. Yes. Megan Stark. Yes. Tonight we're going to start with honors and we'll begin with teacher of the year. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Sparks. Um, we have two very special presentations tonight. Uh, the first one will be uh, facilitated by uh, Mr. Dan Harvey, our Director of Human Resources, and he'll talk to you a little bit about the Teacher of the Year program and, and be introducing Central City Schools nominee. And then uh, that will be followed by, again, another very special presentation by uh, Meredith Florby in regards to the uh, nature program that she is in charge of at Primary Village North. So, uh, Dan, we'll start with you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson, and good evening. Um, each year, the district participates in the Ohio Teacher of the Year program, which is sponsored by the Ohio Department of Education. The mission of the Ohio Teacher of the Year program is to honor, promote, and recognize excellence in teaching and the teaching profession. Uh, this year, the district nominee was selected from Driscoll Elementary School, and I am very pleased to announce that the district has selected Mrs. Jackie Volmer for this very special recognition. And, and her, the first of her nominator, uh, Ms. Aaron Booker, come, uh, come to the uh, podium, please. Um, Jackie is a special education teacher at Driscoll, of course, and has worked for the Centerville City Schools for the past 15 years uh, in various capacities as a para-pro, a long-term sub, and now, of course, in the role of special education teacher. She's a proud graduate of Miami University. She's been teaching special education for the past 13 years. Uh, her nominator is Driscoll Principal Ms. Erin Booker, and Ms. Booker will be making a couple comments uh, about Jackie here in a few minutes. Uh, before Ms. Booker makes her comments, uh, our Community Relations Specialist, Mrs. Sarah Swan, has prepared um, an informational video, a video clip of both Jackie uh, and Ms. Booker introducing themselves and sharing additional information about this process. So, Mr. Shrell, can you start our video, please? I'm an intervention specialist at your school. I work with second through fifth graders who have disabilities. This is my 12th year of teaching and I've worked in Centerville my entire career. Before teaching, I worked as a paraprofessional at your school and for summer camps through the district. Growing up, my mom was a special education teacher and I spent a lot of time interacting with her students. I enjoyed helping her students to engage in the community and coach young adults in the Special Olympics. I got tremendous satisfaction seeing the joy on their faces when they accomplished a skill they had been working towards. The thing that motivates me is seeing my students' successes with their academics, life skills, and social communication. Achievements in these areas are reinforced by hearing from parents and other service providers who are reporting the progress that has been made. My goal as a teacher is to help my students to become as independent as possible. My students may be in elementary school, but I'm already thinking about and working on the skills they will need as members of the community in the future. We are truly blessed to have Mrs. Jackie Vollmer as part of our Driscoll family. She is a dedicated educator who is continually learning and growing to provide the absolute best for our students. Mrs. Vollmer has high expectations for her students. Regardless of the unique needs of her learners, she demands that they work hard to reach their fullest potential. Mrs. Vollmer creates partnerships with her families. She is the link between home and school for their medical needs, their behavioral needs, their social emotional needs, their communication needs, and of course their academic needs. There are countless examples of how she goes above and beyond for her families. Mrs. Vollmer is also highly respected by her colleagues. She leads a talented group of paraprofessionals, she collaborates with numerous related service providers on a daily basis, and she also serves as a mentor for other intervention specialists both officially and unofficially. Mrs. Vollmer is exceptional and very deserving of this honor. She truly makes a difference in the lives of those who are fortunate enough to cross her path. I'd like to uh, thank Mrs. Swan for putting together that video piece this evening and 
Also, uh, to share with the Board of Education and our community that the video uh, clip will also be posted on the district website. Um, a little bit more about Mrs. Walmer. She's an outstanding and accomplished teacher that excels in her classroom with her special needs students in every aspect, every day. Uh, most notably, she is simply a very caring person who genuinely respects and attends to each of her students in a very personalized and individualized manner. Mrs. Volmer's primary goal is to help ensure her, her students are making forward progress and feel valued every day. She consistently demonstrates leadership and innovation in and out of, uh, outside of the school setting, and this communicates the significance of lifelong learning to her uh, professional peers. Um, Jackie stated to me, quote, my passion for working with students with disabilities began early in my life. As a high school student, I coached Special Olympics speed skating and worked at various summer camps assisting children and young adults with disabilities. During my junior and senior year of high school, I was an early childhood education student at PVN and spent most of my time in special education classrooms. I knew as a junior I wanted to be an intervention specialist for the Central Schools. Uh, it's an honor tonight um, to present this recognition to Mrs. Walmer. Uh, and at this time, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Cooper to say a couple more comments. If ever there was an educator deserving of this award, Centerville Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Jackie Bomber is definitely it. We are so fortunate to have her as part of our Driscoll family, and it is such an honor to be able to share her with all of you today. It is often said that teaching is hard to work. There is no doubt that it takes a tremendous amount of heart to be an exceptional educator. And there is no arguing that Mrs. Ballmer loves her job with all of her heart. When thinking of Mrs. Ballmer as an educator, one of my favorite educational quotes come to mind. Teachers have three loves. A love of learning, a love of learners, and the love of bringing the first two loves together. Mrs. Ballmer is a lifelong learner who will do whatever it takes to ensure her students succeed and become as independent as possible. Congratulations, Jackie. Thank you for being you and for everything that you do for our students, our families, and our colleagues. Thank you, Ms. Booker. Um, tonight, uh, Mrs. our uh, board president, Mrs. Sparks, would like to make the uh, actual presentation of the award. Thank you. I am so very honored and humbled. You often hear the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, since we're the Elks, in my classroom, it takes a herd to support and educate a child. This honor is not just about me, but goes to the many people I work with daily and weekly in my classroom. When I started teaching 12 years ago, I learned from many of the people in my herd, and they have helped shape me to become the teacher I am today. I would like to thank the following people. My paraprofessionals in my classroom, Laura Dusso, Karen Lash, and Kathy Posse, the speech and language pathologist, Amory Small, the physical therapist, Julie Erbal and Bobby Mushan, the occupational therapist, Elizabeth Favreau, my teaching partners, Lauren Bridgens, Amanda McCormick, and Jessica Sanders, the school nurses, Yvonne Franklin and Jamie Johnson, the school secretary, Kim Mishka, and my building principal, Karen Booker, the entire Driscoll staff, and my past and present students for always pushing me to be the best teacher I could be. However, none of this have, would, would have been possible if it weren't for my first and biggest mentors, my mom and dad. At a young age, they instilled in me that an education and good work ethic was important. To my mom, thank you for always listening to my never-ending school stories and letting me bounce ideas off of you morning and night. You and your students were the reason I wanted to become a special education teacher. Finally, thank you to my family. Jeffrey, you are my biggest cheerleader and the glue that keeps me and our family together. Thank you for your patience, all those nights that I say, I'll be leaving soon. <laughs> Thank you for always saying yes to all of my crazy ideas and never saying no when I need to buy just one more thing for school. Ellie and Owen, thanks for showing your kindness by being willing to share your toys with my students and always telling me to have a good day in the morning. Thank you again to my herd for supporting me and my students daily. You are the ones who have helped shape me into the teacher I am today. Thank you. Just 
sit down after that. Um, great job, thank you, uh, Jackie. Uh, Jackie's credentials will be reviewed by a state selection panel that will choose one individual to represent the Ohio Teacher of the Year. Jackie, uh, just on behalf of the Board of Education, uh, our administrative team, I'd like to thank you for all of your outstanding work. Again, congratulate you. Special recognition and to wish you good luck at the state level of competition. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, the, the next very special presentation, we'd like to invite uh, Meredith Florky up to the podium. Uh, Meredith leads the nature program at Primary Village North, and so we appreciate her being here tonight to talk a little about the, the great things that she's doing at EBN. Thank you. I will take this. And my best to speak into a microphone. My usual habitat is filled with mud, lots of children, and maybe the occasional animal. Um, so, much different environment tonight. I want to continue um, with the theme of a village and um, recognition. And tonight, I would not be here if not for um, several people. And a little bit about me, I'm a past director at um, First School in Centerville and founder and director and teacher at Learning Tree Farm Nature Preschool. Uh, also involved in the community in several different ways. And this is how um, the principal at PBN, Ms. Klein, got in touch with me. I want to give recognition to her leadership and also um, parent Min, um, Mary Watchering, who had um, her children in my program at Learning Tree Farm, connected Mindy and I. So thank you, Mary. Um, what we began with was last summer coming together. Um, and here is Mary and her children helping in the garden. We were able to um, host five uh, summer family learn with me events, which means we get to learn and talk with each other and have some activities. And the parents actually were helping us weed at the same time. And we had a great time doing it. Also at the same time, um, the gal who's up here with me today, Lindsay Groff, is another parent at PBN. And she and I connected in the nature-based world prior to um, my coming to PBN. And it just so happened that we realized that she was a parent at this school anyway. So she has been walking um, alongside me on this whole journey. We came together with some goals. And you'll notice that these goals are tied in with the building goals at PBN and also the district goals. Uh, I'm not going to read everything for you here tonight. You're here to see the pictures. But I, I, um, I highlighted a couple of key words, like collaboration, um, connecting emotionally and with, in relationship with each other. After the years that we've had, children were really needing to connect with other people and have some joy. Um, and using data and research, which we will get to um, a little bit later but really providing the connected tissue. As I pulled the teachers, um, over 30 teachers and volunteers that had been involved um, up to this point in the, in the Wonders of Nature um, program, it was really like, we know this is valuable. We want to do this. We know how to do this. But we're just missing that connected tissue piece. The person to fill the bird feeders, the person to you know, source the seeds, the person to write the grant for the equipment and things like that. Um, this is one of my favorite, I'm not gonna commentate every single picture, but um, one of our first grade lessons um, was a very introductory basic lesson. But one of the students noticed a dead bird on the ground. And so that lesson then became the dead bird lesson. We scrapped everything else and completely pivoted because the children were, of course, uh, very concerned. And we went through an entire uh, month of problem solving and they eventually found the reason why that bird had died, um, consulting experts and using non-fiction uh, We also coordinated with local Eagle Scouts and PBN alum, uh, Grayson Atkins, and have been coordinating with the Parks Department next door. And we've created two outdoor classrooms, um, as well as some access paths to the Woods. We've also written grants to the Rotary, the Optimist. I want to give them a huge shout out for their support. 
we will um, show you what they bought in a little bit, as well as the education grant um, that was awarded in the last month. And um, here's some more pictures of those family events. You can see the kids are getting involved from the very beginning. And this, in case you haven't been to PBN, this is the outdoor nature spaces at the back and the wooded area you see behind it is the park next door. Um, that we found the gate to and have been accessing it all year. So with our first grade students, we have um, done lots of fun lessons here. Lindsay is leading the lesson. We made sure that she's had lots of exposure and, and um, opportunities to lead the children as well, learning about trees. Here's one of our um, community volunteers, Alex Pearl, um, who jumped right in and got on board um, working one-on-one -on -one with Kids. And this was go back, something that was important. We have um, the ability to open the playground during um, outdoor recess. And so they can choose to come over and utilize the nature spaces so that it's not just getting utilized you know, five or six times a year when there's a lesson. They actually get to explore and have um, open-ended time out there. Exploring, using tools, investigating all the plants. And then here we are in the wooded spaces. Um, we've wor worked on lessons such as um, creature teachers, which tell us about our senses, um, talking about trees and seeds. The ever in, um, popular winter, getting ready for winter lesson with hibernation, rumination, migration, and adaptation, complete with den building. And then um, animal tracking in this winter. So you can see uh, we've been out in all kinds of weather. And parents have been very supportive. On the left, that's cool. That's ice. And the kids are able to walk and experience that in a safe manner. Uh, this is where I refer back to the Rotary and Optimus. They funded a cart full of boots, ponchos, fleeces, mittens, hats, anything that we possibly need. Parents have been great and very supportive, but sometimes <coughs> families don't have the means to keep up with the shoe sizes or um, forget for a day. So that is the integral part of the need to provide so that we don't have to stay in that. Tracking, super excited. There's a lot of wild things happening just in our playground and in the woods back. So the kindergarten and preschool, the big thing that we've just finished up is maple tapping. We tapped um, 10 trees in the back of the woods and have been made, so actually making maple syrup with them. Uh, the optimists took on a challenge. They wanted to donate more money to the Rotary, and so they um, funded these little balloons, what that called. But uh, the preschoolers are able to get out and not have to worry about getting dirty. There's some inclusion. All children are getting outside. Staff has been working very um, creatively with me to make sure that that happens. Things like watching the wheat cycle from beginning to end, planting wheat, harvesting wheat, um, grinding wheat, and baking with it. And the little red hen came to this. This is the maple tap. So the connective tissue, um, you know, we we initiated conversation between um, all, all of the, the younger buildings um, through training with Lindsay right alongside with me the entire year. Uh, the UD family engagement students have been out um, for two semesters working on a nature night. And also wanted to thank the PTO who is um, an integral in funding this position for um, <clears throat> some of the fun, exciting things to start to wrap up is the way that we're handling the nature program this year is such that we can handle a dead bird. Things that happen in nature in real time um, are more important than you know the lesson that I thought was going to happen. Um, we had a mystery plant doll series. Um, a student came to me who you know has struggled 
um, in his class show with a mystery seed pod. And he was able to go out with me and see that project to the end, boosting his self-esteem. Um, and now he is one of the soil students that I have um, been working with who come to me for a little bit of extra um, time in nature. And it's advanced soil study. We've had some animal visitors, Mindy's favorite, the live reptiles. <laughs> Um, but learning so far, collaboration and common goals are important. Budgeting and fi financial investment in this program have been key. Investing in people, talent, and training is more important, I think, than the actual materials sometimes. And um, as you'll see on our next slide, uh, um, penguins at PBN are hungry for this, and they've been very supportive and excited. Um, research shows that um, when children spend a lot of time out in nature, repeatedly produces a community committed to preserving its natural resources, that improves social skills, and Lindsay's going to start to pass out some of this data that you can take a look at for anybody who's interested, I have on the back of the table. Um, but we'll also be better positioned to fulfill future types of jobs in our community. This is the one I was talking about. We did a, the UD students did a family survey of 154 um, families that responded. Um, over 98% of them were positive about this program, and there's some quotes um, that you can view as well. So with that, I want to say thank you, and um, let's, go all, let's all go outside and play in Thank you. She's being really modest. If you saw this program, it would blow you away the way that she's taking state standards. Because I volunteered for years in this program, and she took a great program and made it unbelievable. Go out there, go to PBN, go to the back of the player, and look at how she's changed the park and worked with the park district. It's really amazing how she's given the state standards into these lessons, and the kids are eating it up. They are so excited to see her. He wants the boots, and it takes forever to get dressed. But they are <laughs> <laughs> worth every penny. It is worth every penny. She's amazing. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> uh, we're going to take uh, just about a two-minute break and kind of reset the, the video camera. And for those of you in the audience, you're welcome to stay for the remainder of, of the exciting meeting that we have planned tonight. Uh, but if you want to exit gracefully, uh, you can take advantage of a, a two-minute break, and then we'll pick back up with our meeting in just a second. So the next is public participation. The Board of Education recognizes the value to school governance of public comment and educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. The presiding officer of each board meeting, I'm sorry, the presiding officer of each board meeting at the public participation is permitted and shall administer the stuff stated. Uh, when you enter the podium, please just state your name, and if you're a resident or not, you have three minutes. Dr. Ward, would you keep time, please? Yes, Looks like we only have one speaker tonight. Would Mr. Whitehead please approach the podium? Hello. Um, my name is Kevin Whitehead, and I'm a resident of do I say my, my address? No, just okay. say you're a resident. Okay, yes, I'm a resident. So my name is Kevin Whitehead, and I'm the valedictorian for the senior class at CHS. I strongly believe that class rank needs to come back for future classes. I'm here because I am no longer a stakeholder. This doesn't matter to me personally. It matters to me ideologically. For many colleges, class rank carries an immense weight. Ivy League schools such as Harvard state that 95% of accepted students are in the top 10% of their class and 47% are either valedictorian or salutatorian. Top tier schools are schools in which Centerville students are getting in at lower rates and Centerville is falling in public school rankings. Without class rank, those numbers will go down even farther as colleges cannot place where a student is in their class. And if half of the clientele are vows or cells, the non-ranked students have to fight for those remaining spots. Secondly, class rank does create a competitive environment regarding top students at Centerville. This is not necessarily a bad thing. 
Competition exists in every aspect of our lives. Student council elections were competitive, and I ended up losing president this year. I accepted it, I lost. In our band and orchestra, we rank people's chairs based on how well they are performing. Coach Cups can't take everyone on his basketball team. It forces those who want to be on the team to work hard and enhance their skills. The same should go for academics. The culture here does not fully back kids going to top schools. I have been told by administration that their main goal is to get a student into OSU. When a basketball or football player commits to a top school, they are applauded. When I discuss my future dreams, I am often questioned for wanting to go to an Ivy League school and not OSU. The Career Expo program, a program consisting of block standard classes that take students away from AP classes, had a Career Expo fair and it was mandatory for every sophomore. However, the AP fair is optional and requires a form from a teacher. Some of my peers went through their high school life without AP classes, and when their senior year hit, they were stunned they couldn't get into OSU with 3A. It's simply a lack of guidance. Centerville should create a position that can help high-achieving students prepare for college applications. At Oakwood and schools up and down the East Coast, counselors email colleges for students, build relationships, and assist students on their college process early on. We have six amazing counselors at Centerville, but they cater to nearly 500 students. There needs to be a counselor for students teaching, seeking the most prestigious schools so it is less of a shot in the dark up against athletes, legacy, and people who donated $5 million for a building. Centerville excels musically and athletically. We do really well at getting students into UC and OSU. However, some students want more. I recommend a more active environment created by class rank, early college guidance in the form of counselors and resources, and a change in culture to a larger focus on the opportunities for our higher achieving students. I want to thank the board for their time, and uh, thank you. 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 And next on the agenda is going to say a report, and that's me, so I'll go ahead to report tonight. Uh, the Ohio Redistricting Commission voted to approve the state legislative district map by a vote of four to three. The approval, or the approved maps did not receive bipartisan support, which makes the approved maps only effective for four years. And that's the end of the report. Next on the agenda is the student board representative report. Would you guys like to go ahead and go to the podium? Good evening, my name is Jacob Beaver, I'm a junior. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about a meeting that Zoe and I went to. Uh, we go once a quarter to the County Education Center um, down in downtown. Uh, we meet there all day from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and we meet with a lot of different people. We've met with philanthropic leaders, uh, people from charities and nonprofits across Dayton, as well as state legislators uh, to see what the issues are that are important to students. Uh, our last meeting was last month. This month. And um, we reviewed what we learned over last time with our state legislators, and then we also talked about youth science, which is going to, uh, they've been experimenting with. So we got to, to look into some stuff that they're experimenting with, with some schools, um, and then also give our feedback on that to see if it would be something that we'd be interested in. Thank you. That works. <laughs> okay. Hi, good evening. My name is Rishi Agrawal, and today I'd like to introduce my newest project as a board rep. Um, I tutor a student in sixth grade at Watts, and I was asking her how school was going, and she informed me about a cyberbullying issue going on throughout the middle schools. Um, I went through middle school, and I understand what she's talking about, and I decided it was time to do something about it. So um, I reached out to our counselors and principals at the middle schools, and I told them what was going on, and that I asked the other board reps and I um, if we could do something about it. And so they all replied, and they were very enthusiastic about doing something, and so I scheduled a meeting with um, the principal at Talent, and we went with him and we discussed it, and um, we talked about setting up a time for to meet with our student council to do something to spread kindness throughout the middle schools. So we have um, something planned that they're, we're gonna dedicate one week, and all three middle schools do something that week to promote kindness, and um, while we do that, we're also gonna educate them about cyberbullying, you know, what a digital footprint is, how it affects not only the student cyberbullying, but to who they bully, and how, you know, it can lead to something much bigger. So we have a couple upcoming meetings on the 7th and the 10th with our um, middle schools to see if we can install something. And then also we are planning to do something with the high school more related towards mental health than bullying.
Speak up and you help her, please. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is the monthly financial report by Ms. Sauber. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk tonight, uh, Mr. Messi and Mrs. Kalifi and I are going to talk a little bit about COVID relief funds that we have received in the district. Uh, so the purpose of all the COVID relief funds that we receive is to prevent, to prepare for, and to respond to COVID-19. That's been the general theme with every, there, we've received several different grants, but that has been the general theme with each one of those. Uh, to date, we've received allocations of almost $11 million uh, over a five-year period of time. And so from the time COVID started uh, here in March of 2020, uh, we're going to go all the way through 2024 spending these funds again to prevent to prepare for and to respond to COVID-19 these are one-time funding sources uh, that we've received from a couple of different grants uh, coronavirus relief funds and then also a, a few different forms of uh, what are called ESSER funds and ARP ESSER as well uh, and then the other the other path that we put on is we decided you know how to use these funds to prevent prepare for and respond to COVID-19 is that we wanted to make sure that we touched all the areas of our operations. And so Mr. Westney and Mrs. Halfie are gonna talk a little bit more about that. Hello, good evening. So just a couple items, um, really on the slide, and talk about personal protection equipment, things like masks, gloves, gowns, any of our nursing supplies that, that take care of our nurses at, at all the buildings. But also to expand on that, there's a lot of cleaning, paper towels, disinfecting um, items that we needed for the buildings. Uh, all of our buildings now have uh, disinfected sprayers, Clorox 360 machines that we use on a daily basis to clean and spray classrooms. We're able to go in quickly, clean and spray those classrooms and disinfect those areas when we have outbreaks of different types of illnesses that may occur in those classrooms. Uh, we also use some of the money for our student nutrition services and transportation. Uh, you'll recall um, when, when the shutdown, we were feeding a lot of our kids throughout the summertime, uh, bringing in our staff in the summertime for our drivers and our food service to prepare the food and get the food out to uh, the buildings or make those deliveries uh, for food for our, our students. And then obviously some of the bigger projects um, that we've been able to do with uh, air handling units, uh, cleaning and disinfecting those units, uh, adding room 13 filters at all those uh, units uh, in our buildings. We typically change the filters out three to four times a year uh, for all of our units uh, throughout all the buildings in the district. And then tonight, we'll also, I'm gonna ask you to approve the boiler project at Lower Elementary, again, using ESSER funds to help support that project. And then with curriculum, technology, instruction, and assessment, um, we've really kind of spent money in several different phases. Um, the first phase was when we, we spent money initially to support remote learning. And so we were able to buy online subscriptions. Um, we needed Wi-Fi hotspots and then the fees to keep those going so families could be connected. We got one-to-one -one with our Chromebooks. We used that money to help with that. And then we purchased some individual supply art kits, different things, math manipulatives to help support that remote learning that was happening. We had pickups um, throughout that time. Then we moved into the learn blended learning phase. And so then we were continuing with Wi-Fi wi hotspots. We need digital cameras in order to, for teachers to be um, teaching both in-person and remote students. Um, we, again, supported with individual kits for that school year as well. And then we did compensate our teachers because they were doing all the planning and prep to make sure that they were teaching students both in-person and remote. And then in the phase that we're in now, that um, in-person learning and recovery, um, there have been some things we needed um, to support, including summer intervention. Um, we've also used this money to um, help provide additional staff. So we have additional counselors at the high school. Um, we added some math positions to help with recovery, as well as reduced class size in first grade in both buildings, and then some intervention specialists. Um, we've also bought a variety of supplies that are supporting that learning recovery and making, helping students move forward as we continue to recover. So that's what we have, unless you have any questions for us this evening. item is the treasurer's recommendations. Okay. 
consider approving, approving the January 2022 financial statements, the monthly general fund rolling report, the monthly cash reconciliation, the monthly fund activity report, then and now purchase orders approved by administration, certified by the treasurer, and supported by the board, resulting total $9,384.72. Monthly cash reconciliation, December 2021, corrected. So moved. Second. Could you call the roll, please, Ms. Hubbard? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroeder? Yes. Megan Spark? Yes. Consider approving the minutes of the following Board of Education meetings, January 24th, 2022 regular meeting, and the February 22nd, 2022 work session. For the motion, please. You got it. Second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Sauber? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroeder? Yes. Megan Spark? Yes. <coughs> Next on the agenda is the superintendent's recommendations. So. <laughs> The superintendent recommends accepting resignations as listed on Schedule A. The superintendent recommends the employment change of employment status or the change of contract status for the certified personnel, certificated personnel listed on Schedule B for the salaries, programs, and the effective dates given. The superintendent recommends the employment or change of employment status for the support staff personnel listed on Schedule C for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. The superintendent recommends the employment of the personnel listed on schedules D and D1 for the supplementary, supplemental contract of extra duty assignments. And the, sub, the superintendent recommends the granting of leaves of absence for the personnel listed on schedule E for the reasons and on the dates given. So moved. Second. May I call the roll please, Ms. Sauber? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Consider approving the farm lease between Centerville City Schools and the Lucas Brother Farm for both Sheehan and Franklin Street properties. So moved. Okay. Can I please, or can you please call the roll, Ms. Sauber? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Consider the following capital improvement project using ESSER funds business um, a resolution. Did you read all that? Yep. Okay. Just a resolution approving the lowest bit and best bid for the Fry Mechanical to replace two heating boilers at Weller Elementary with Brian Flex unit boilers as outlined in the competitive bid specifications. So Second. Can I have the roll call, please, Ms. Moore? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Do we have comments? Well, I just wanted to reiterate that that's coming from the, the last of the ESSER funds, the ARC ESSER, is that correct? So otherwise it would have come from the current improvement budget. That's correct. Now can I have the roll please, Ms. Albert? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Yes. Consider a resolution approving the following board policies as listed. Can I have a motion please? So moved. Second. Oh, can you call the roll, please, Ms. Sauber? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. <clears throat> Consider authorizing continued membership of the Ohio High School Athletic Association for the 2022-2023 school year. I move. Second. Please call the roll, Ms. Sauber. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Sternbaugh? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Consider approving a resolution appointing Carlene Sutman to the open Centerville Washington Township trustee position effective February 28, 2022 through December 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. Okay. Could you please call the roll? Wait, wait, wait. Before you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to take a second and just explain how that works. Absolutely. Um, so the Washington Centerville Public Library is one of 148 libraries in Ohio that was established as a school district library and so therefore uh, due to the Ohio Revised Code that really just simply means that Central City Schools is the library's taxing authority and it also means that the school district must uh, put issues on the ballot on behalf of the library and then also has to approve resolutions like uh, members that they want to include on the library trustee board so um, this is just a formality and it's really just part of the Ohio Rice Code that several city schools 
uh, gets involved uh, with the, the library. We love the library, but uh, they, they do their own thing, and they are their own entity group, and, and we just do this because we're required by the Higher Rights Code. Uh, a director of the libraries is back here in the audience, Liz Foltz, if you guys would have any other questions, but thank Liz for being here, and we're just doing our, uh, our uh, compliant legal job here tonight to approve um, uh, Carmen Sutton as the next one of the trustees. So. And just to read it, you, we have no oversight of how they spend their money. That's correct. What they do with their money. That's correct. This is all their own entity, and that, Mrs. Sutton is a great choice. That's correct. Definitely. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Mrs. Dernbach. Yes. Dr. Rohr. Yes. Mr. Schreier. Yes. Megan Sparks. Yes. Any final comments for the good of the order? The Board of Education. I would. Uh, you guys are going to get sick of me, and the community is probably going to be sick of me saying this all the time. But I am extremely proud of all of our employees for. They're especially, uh, they've worked really, really hard through the last two years of the pandemic, and uh, I want everyone to know that I personally, and I'm sure the board, uh, appreciate you all very, very much. Okay. Uh, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G1, I hereby move that the board adjourn to executive session for the purpose of considering the employment of an employee of the school district. No other action will be taken except to come out of the executive session to adjourn. And motion. So moved. Second. Could you please call the roll for the last time? Mr. Dahl? Yes. Mrs. Dernbach? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroeder? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. 